Hey everybody, hope you're all doing really good. Today I'm working on an iPhone 7 Plus that was sent here for data recovery. Hello, I have an iPhone 7 Plus. I took my phone into a technology repair shop to replace the charging port mic. They tried fixing it, ended up screwing up something on the motherboard while working on it, sent it off to a motherboard guy who said he thought the star chip was messed up, but he couldn't fix it. After three weeks of waiting, they returned my phone, not even put back together, with a messed up motherboard and looks like now has a messed up battery. My main hope is to get the videos and pictures, anything else like contacts would be amazing. Whatever can be recovered, I am thankful for. Thank you so much. Now, I already have the board out of this thing, and I will say whenever I was taking it apart, the battery is swelled up like... The battery is swelled up like this. You know, classic swelled up battery now when i first opened this phone i was surprised to see that the trinity ic is actually missing and somebody has installed some micro jumpers here now once i got the board out and flipped it over i was even more surprised to see that it looks like somebody sort of approached the tristar area here with like a pair of pliers or something it's sort of just like it's had the metal bracket here peeled away from it now right away it looks like somebody here was chasing down a short we have a couple of capacitors missing right here. I'm kind of bummed to see that we've got uh, these two little ICs missing here. We're going to have to get something going on there because I've got a feeling we're going to need those in order to be able to transfer the data off of here. So I'm going to say that uh, it does look like beyond a shadow of a doubt somebody has been messing with the star chip here. And they've also left us some of their, uh, some of their fuzz. Let's get some of that out of the way here. Mmm... So aside from the TriStar area, I've also found that this board is missing capacitors all over the place. We have a capacitor that has been plucked out here. We have a capacitor missing here, 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 wait, no, just here, here. Another one missing down here. This sticker here has already been cut, which means somebody has already, or most likely, already had this CPU shield off of here. I'm going to say that they probably did. So we have got stuff raked off the board all over the place. We've got a TriStar area that looks like it's been, you know, maybe, I'm not, I'm not quite sure, but just like maybe the TriStar area has been messed with. Okay, back, back up here. What, what was the original problem? Like, what, what did this guy say originally? Replace the charger port mic. <laughs> Let's see what we can figure out. Okay. Let's go ahead and just tackle some of these missing caps here. I'm going to be using diode mode here today. I am going to put my red probe on ground and use my black probe to do the probing. And we're getting a 0 .004 out here. I think it's time to get some new multimeter probes again. Okay, and then in here we're getting a 0.4. That is actually a normal reading. I'm not sure why they have removed those caps. Maybe it was just like, I don't know, Russian roulette or something? Like, why in the heck are those caps missing? All right, let's try, let's try some of these other ones. Let's get down in here and check this one. Zero, zero, that's shorted on that side, but it might actually be ground. So let's check the other side. Zero, zero, that is absolutely shorted on both sides. Let's have a look at Flexboard View. And let's just see what line that cap is on. We're missing the cap right next to Q2101, which is C2114. It's a VDD main cap. This board has a short to ground on VDD main. Let's just have a look at this little short circuit problem with some thermal imaging, shall we? We're going to hook, hook up our ground clamp there. Now, one thing that I really like about Flexboard View is the way that it draws a freaking line to everywhere that a network is connected to. So for this little test, I'm going to grab C, let's just use C3405 here. Let's go ahead and set our power supply down to about a volt. And I'm going to drop the amperage because I really don't know where this thing is shorted. Let's just give it 300 milliamps and see if the thermal camera will turn this up for us. So let's turn the power supply on. And then we're going to give this thing one volt, 300 milliamps right here using it up i'm not really seeing anything that jumps out at me so let's go ahead and set this up for three amps 
And at one volt, it's not actually capable of drawing three amps. It's only drawing uh, 680 milliamps, which that actually should be enough to narrow this down. And we've got this little piece of debris here that is just getting dangerously close to something that it's not supposed to be touching. So let's get this out of the way. So we're not making much heat yet. Let's move this thermal camera on up here and look at this end of the board. Uh, we are starting to get some warmth here near the top end of the board, right? Okay, so I'm going to take the power off right now. We're at 690 milli big ones. Power's off. Oh, there's that heat going away. Let's do it once more. Here's power on, power off. Power on, power off, power on, power off. Do you see what I see? It would appear that this short is toward the top end of the board and not the bottom end of the board, which would mean this board may have been absolutely completely mutilated for no reason. So the thermal camera suggests that we have a short somewhere up here around this little main cap area here, which, you know, that's something that's really commonly shorted. But, you know, if I didn't know any better, I'd say that Wi-Fi IC has a bulge in it, right? Is the Wi-Fi IC bulged? Hmm, I'm not sure, but it may just be my imagination playing tricks on me, making me think that the Wi-Fi IC is bulged right here. I just, I feel like there's a, I just, I feel like that that's the spot. I, I, I don't know, it just looks fishy. Let's go ahead and get that CPU shield off of here, shall we? So to remove this shield, the absolute very first thing that I do is remove this little strip of adhesive right here. We just apply a little bit of heat, stick the blade in, or stick the tweezers under it, and it slides right off there. Uh, we've got some weird blocks here on top of the shield. What in the world is that? Definitely came off there really easy. So under the CPU shield, I'm not seeing anything too visibly crazy. I have seen some of them with this audio I see here shattered. You know, various caps and other things damaged in here. But um, this one actually looks pretty good. I'd like to say that the short that I'm running into here is caused by this prior rework. However, it seems to be getting more hot up here. What is this black ooze? Let's just do this little thermal camera test again and give it some more power. I'm going to double our voltage here. I've cranked it up to 2 volts. And we're going to allow it to have up to 3 amps. Let's see what we get. Well, that Wi-Fi IEC area sure does get hot. Did they mutilate this over... something silly? I'm pretty well sure that Wi-Fi IC is bulging. Maybe it's the cap next to it. But I think that IC is bulging, and it's almost like oozing out some sort of ominous fluid. So let's use some alcohol here to try to hone this down a little bit. This cap here is also on VDD main, so we can put our voltage in here. Let's get everything here good and wet with isopropyl alcohol. and see what gets hot. I think I actually see solder balls and this ooze that's coming out of that Wi-Fi IC. Mm, boy, that IC sure does get hot fast, doesn't it? So we're drawing a pretty solid 2 amps at 2 volts. Let's just go ahead and give this 4 volts. Oh, yeah. Yep. Let's zoom in on this crack here. And here it comes. Start the music. Here we go. Anybody got music for boiling Wi-Fi? Dun, 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 dun. All right, so we get all sorts of heat there. So now I think it's pretty safe to say that this phone was probably having battery drain issues due to like a Wi-Fi IC short that was probably causing it to get hot, drain fast, maybe even cause it to where like whenever they were plugged into the charger, it was showing it was charging, but the voltage, you know, but the percentage was still going down. Um, so... It wound up in a shop, or a couple of shops, and this thing has had the charging port messed with. 
it's had the board is like oh it's completely mutilated so back over here looking at flex board view paul doesn't pay me to brag about this software he does give it to me for free but i do believe this piece of software is absolutely freaking lootly gorgeous so let's have a look here at wlan rf so if we select one of these lines coming out of wlan rf and we click on this little pdf search feature here and we can just click that line to search it a couple of times until we get to the part of the schematic we need to be at and here we go we are at the wi-fi bluetooth ic and it looks like vdd main is actually hooked directly to that ic Let's poke around here in diode mode and see if we can find anything else interesting. So we know we do have a bulge here in this Wi-Fi IC. It's like it's actually got solder pushing out of it. We do have a 0 .003 short to ground on BDD main. But look here, this little coil over here also has 003 on both sides. So SRLVX1 and SRLVX2. So L7600RF, this thing sort of sits off to the side here off of the main Wi-Fi IC and I cannot really give you a good reason as to why I'm about to do this other than I've done it before. I'm just trying to get rid of that little short issue that we have without removing the Wi-Fi IC. Since we are getting a direct short to ground right here as well, I'm going to just I'm going to go ahead and try to pull this and see if that makes any difference. Honestly, looking at the schematic uh, and seeing what the board view shows where this thing's connected there's no good reason why this would actually make any significant difference now to get this little nuisance off the board i'm going to begin warming it up with hot air get a little bit of flux on here and then right off the bat here we're going to begin lowering its melting temperature i'm going to start flooding this with some low melt I would like this to come off the board really, really stinking easy. Oh, it looks like I put <laughs> way too much on there. That's going to be okay. All right, we've got that off the board. Now let's see if we still have a main short. Yeah, no surprise there. We're still getting a 0 .004, so VDD main is definitely still shorted. 0 .05 there, 0 .009 there. So to get rid of this little nuisance of a short, we will need to remove the Wi-Fi IC from the board. This is just all to get this thing back to a point where it was before it went into the other shop. Well, not really back to where it was, but this is just to solve the original problem. And we can start dealing with everything else that was created. I mean, this wouldn't have been like an easy, super easy recovery board, like removing the Wi-Fi IC or even replacing it. That's a, I mean, it's a pretty significant thing to go through. Uh, it's not just like removing one capacitor or something from the board. Um, this is actually a significant short to ground here. But boy, talk about going after the wrong area of the board. They went after TriStar and Trinity. At the other end of the board, when this board actually has a Wi-Fi IC fault. My hot air is set at 225C and an airflow of 65. I'm probably a little bit too hot right now because if i really cranked it down and really kept the air on here uh, this is actually hot enough to start causing damage air should be a little cooler than this for removing glue i'm being impatient today though there we go all right we're getting ready to start pour pouring the coals to this and yank this wi-fi i see off the board I just got to trim around the remaining edges here and give us a place to slip our tool into. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and set my hot air on 400 degrees C with an airflow of 40. And we're going to begin warming this up. Now, 
Prepare yourselves for a lesson in ball squeezage. Uh, <laughs> on the left here, you will see some components that have not had their balls squeezed. Right here. These components, these are all coated in epoxy. Now, as I slip in my tool to remove this Wi-Fi IC, I've got to get this board extremely hot. And I think you'll see over here on the left, if you watch, we will most likely cause just a little bit of ball squeezage. Now, we're not doing it on purpose. We want to try to do as little ball squeezing as possible. Oh, oh too hot. See this? We just caused ball squeezage. So we took an otherwise normal area of board and just squeezed out a bunch of balls everywhere. So that's that's bad, okay? That's, that's what we don't want to do. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and warm this right on up and begin lifting this IC up off of here. And you'll notice the solder squeezing out of the epoxy here on the left side of your screen. Some days when I'm a little more on point, I can do a better job than that, but... Uh, Oh, oh geez. Almost there. A little bit more. Yes. Wi-Fi IC delete. And we did some pad lifting up here. That's gonna be okay. We're gonna we're gonna do the right thing and just pretend like we didn't see it. And here you go, everybody. Here is my ball squeezage. I'm actually pretty embarrassed by that. That's that's actually significantly too hot. Now, we do have to worry about the CPU on the other side of the board. We don't want to cause any ball squeezage there, or this board will need a CPU reball. But I'm happy to say we don't even have the babiest, tiniest little eensy beensy teensiest little bit of shred of ball squeezage. Let's see if our little short to ground is gone, shall we? So on VDD main, we are now getting... 0.69 it is still shorted Ooh, what is this mm. now this looks this looks good oh yeah this looks absolutely lovely here we've got some pads that are seemingly completely and totally welded let's see what those pads are we're going to consult magical flex board view here and just have a gander at what those pads are here. Oh, what do you know? We've got a whole row of VD, VDD main pads with ground on both sides. So looking at the board, we can see that we have one, two, three, four, and five are just completely, totally welded here. And then looking at flex board view, we have one, two, three, four, and five. Five, they're just VDD main. They should be okay with being welded unless they've gotten into the ground plane of the board. Who wants to see if we can make some smoke? All right, here we go. Applying four volts, three amps, and one, two, three. Oh, come on. I wanted fire. I'm not going to get a bunch of clicks like this. Well, I'm pretty confident that's where the, the short's at anyway. So let's just, let's use our short remover 3000. Oh yeah, look, it's like welded to the ground plane down in here. One day I would like to upgrade my capture hardware so I can get this a little better for you, but look at this. We've got, we have VDD main. We just got like solder squeezed everywhere here. And it's actually stuck to the ground plane. Look at this charcoal mess. All right, let's get that out of there. Now... There is a lot of carbon, or whatever this burnt char is around this. I have found this stuff to be conductive. And will actually, ooh, cause a short. I probably shouldn't be just like ripping this apart like this. Okay, so I've additionally mutilated this. And now I want to see if I can clean off some of these here carbon deposits. Looks really good, actually. Looks brand new. And now, red probe on ground, black probe on VDD main. And we are getting a 0.33. All right, so we have actually pretty, pretty confidently just solved the original problem with this board. So now I can attempt to power this board on 
and see what happens. I know I should probably spend some time with that TriStar area, because uh, we have some stuff missing there that's probably going to be really important to be able to transfer data. But let's just go ahead and slip this thing into a housing and see what happens. All right. We have got the power supply on, set to 4 volts, 3 amps. We are going to press the button to boot in 1, 2, 3. Fire, fire. Okay, no fire. 80 milliamps, 200 milliamps. 150. Oh, wait, we're missing Trinity. There's no chance, I mean, no chance in this thing having backlight. Get back over here. Need to see. Do we have image? You know, let's just watch the supply. 200 milliamps. Two hundred and three hundred milliamps, five hundred. This phone is booting, but we have no image. So let's have a look at this Trinity area after all, shall we? Trinity is M2800. M2800 is basically a collection of inductors. See, in the past, you would have a separate coil for backlight. You would have a se separate coil for the arc driver. And what Apple has done, they have taken all of these, well, not all, but a handful of various coils from around the board, and they have just, like, crammed them together into this conglomerate of a thing that they call Trinity. And on the iPhone 7 Plus, that is M2800. So looking at the schematic, here is M2800, and you can see that it has a whole crap load of ground and a handful of coils that have just been combined into this package. So VDD main comes into it, and then you've got the Tigris Buck LX. So here's here's the, the Tigris Buck coil. Here's the Arc LX. Here's, here's that coil. We've got a coil here for the speaker amp. So Trinity is really just like a whole bunch of coils. Now, somebody has done a little bit of microsurgery here, and they have hooked up some jumpers. And let's just look and see what they have jumpered. So at the far left side here, we've basically got, we're starting on the second row, the first one down. If we look at Flexboard, that is X2, okay, pin X2, ARC LX1. What's the next one down? Okay, the next one down, that is also an ARC line. Uh, these are things for the flash, okay, on the, on, on the back of the phone, like flashlight, right, ARC driver. Please correct me if I'm wrong. So then we've got, they skipped a row, and then they went on to the next one, which is going to be pin X5 here. This is speaker amp LX. This is a, a coil for the speaker amp. And then they also have a jumper on the next one down here. That is going to be for also for the speaker amp. So why are they going after the flashlight and the speaker amp? So also looking at Trinity here, it looks like, uh, both backlight coils are tied up here, but I'm not seeing anything for image. We've got, boy, this Buck LX, that could give us some issues because we need a good USB connection. Uh, anything related to Tigris is going to make me really nervous about this thing not rebooting and, and giving me a, like, I got to get the data off this phone. That, that's what I'm doing here today. So technically it should be booting without backlight. I didn't see that. Let's poke around with a multimeter. I'm just going to zip around these display pins and see if I can find anything that really jumps out at me. 0.47. Second pin is an open line. Is that normal? Yeah, that just goes over to the other, other connector. I'm just looking for anything unusual. Any open lines, you know, grounds that aren't supposed to be there. Now we do have a ground here that's one, two, three, four, five, six pins over. That's probably right. Okay, so we can actually work off of that. I think it's more likely to say that this phone was booting with image but no backlight. Okay, now we're getting over here into these image chokes. So we got ground, data, data, ground, data, data. Around. And I am going to go ahead and check all these because I have had iPhone 7s with missing data lines before. Going back to the CPU. Ground. Data. data. Okay, so that's all okay. I think it's pretty, pretty likely that this phone is booting without backlight and not without image. We thought I already had one of these ready to go.
So there we go. Now we have a display without backlight. Let's just see if we can tell if this is a no backlight issue or a no image issue. Now we're giving it our own backlight. Aha, see so it is a no backlight issue. All right, let's see if this thing boots up. I'm just going to go ahead and leave my backlight fixer 3000 laying there. Come on, baby, show me a lock screen and then we can move on and start trying to get USB working, shall we? Uh, actually got an iPhone 7 Plus that I'm using for the backlight on an iPhone 7 Plus. We're still hung at Apple, which with everything that we've got going on in the TriStar area, no, we're not hung at Apple no more, fellas. Look at this. We are actually up to lock screenage with working touch. That is unbelievable. Huh. And I've got a passcode. What are the odds that USB is actually going to connect? I don't think the odds are very good. So we had some pretty important stuff missing right here. At least some of these things look a little bit important. What does Flexboard View have to say about this? Oh, tell me, oh, wise Flex One. All right, Q2701, Q2700. These are both missing. I don't think that we're going to get away with not having those on the board, but it did boot without it. However, it did not draw a lick of charging current, and that's okay if I approach this with a full battery. Let's just see if I can get a USB connect out of this thing. That's a good thing we got those jumpers on the arc driver and the speaker amp. I really don't think we're going to get USB detect, but I'm going to go ahead and just kind of try it anyways. Let's get our beloved, our naked screen assembly here. Not even a backlight box or 3D touch or home button or anything. We've just got a raw screen. Let's just check the voltage on this battery to be safe. 4.1. That's pretty much a full, semi-full LiPo. Let's get our backlight fixer back under the screen here. Okay, we are up, up to a lock screen. I've entered the passcode. The phone is unlocked. It's warning me about Touch ID. USB. Yeah, no USB connect. No surprise there, right? So, I now have this board booting. I've gotten rid of the, what I believe to be the original short, which was the Wi-Fi IC up here. But now, to get the data out of this thing, I'm faced with needing to deal with all of the carnage that's been created in, attempts, uh, in previous attempts at trying to figure this out. We've got to get USB connection working on this if I am to transfer all of the files off of it. So let's just have a look at that TriStar area once more, uh, and see what we can do about all this carnage. So having a look at Flexboard view here, we know that we're missing a couple of pins. We're pretty well missing the same exact pin on both of them. Okay, so Act Diode to Comp Out. That goes over here and hooks up to U2701. So I've got a couple of options here to restore connection to these missing pads up here. I could basically, I can remove this chip over here and I could route a jumper from this top left pin here up to here and just kind of zip between these two. I could also maybe get down in here with a blade and do some digging. Ooh, I see goodness. Hey, we've got some visible traceage here that I can get to. So we actually have a visible trace here that we can solder to. And then we also have one right here that we can solder to. So this is actually going to be two separate jumpers. And my goodness, look, it just, they completely just peeled, like scalped the top layer off of that board. That is unbelievable. Well, I mean, it, I, I do believe it. All right, we're going to use some 44 gauge wire. There we go. We've got those ready to go. All right, now we got to solder us a wire in here, and we are going to, uh, we're just going to repair this pad. Looks good. Good-ish.
There's one. All right, let's get this other one on here. Get it tacked down on there. Uh, I still got some of the shielding left on this wire. Oh, why do I always nitpick this stuff? There we go. Let's get it right back into place there. And get it right down on the board. There's two. All right, let's give it a little bit of a snippy here. I think I cut that off just a little bit too short, but that's going to be okay. Clean up some of this muck. Make it so we can see what's actually going on and roll up these wires. Give it a little snippy here. All right, so we've got us some nice, beautiful wires soldered on here. I don't like that I can see... There's a little bit of visible conductor in the bottom of that crater right there. I just, I really, really, really don't like that. Let's just get some mask in there and cover that up. We definitely don't want to accidentally solder anything to that because I don't have the foggiest clue as to what that is. Cure that up for just a minute with uh, UV lamp. Let's see if we can turn these into pads. I think this one is probably just a fuzz too long, maybe. Let's take just the nip off of that. And we'll just roll this right on up into a nice, beautiful new pad. Let's get this other one rolled up. Nice and gracefully here, and hopefully I don't twitch and rake a whole bunch of stuff off the board or do anything too crazy. Oh yeah, this is looking really good. I think we're going to take it. There we go. Oops. I like the second one a little better than the first one. Maybe we'll just loosen the first one up a little bit. See, I know when I nitpick, I usually just make things worse. But I'm going to just sit here and do this anyways. All right, we got our little snakes built. Now it's time for some green UV mask. Holy mackerel. This was the Lewis Rossman of green UV mask. That was way too much mask. I mean, that was the, the minimal amount of UV mask possible. I'm just trying to make sure that we've got these wires completely covered and we've got the mask all down in underneath it so that when it solidifies it it holds the wire nice and secure all right that's pretty well got that one done and this is just oh geez this is way too much oh, come on. here we go so the mask is cured up. Now we're going to go ahead and just scratch the layer off the top here and reveal our nice shiny new pads. Dun da da dun 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 da da dun 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 da da dun 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 da da dun dun dun. Okay, so that's all looking pretty good. It looks pretty much brand new. And let's go ahead and get this shined up and ready to receive some components. I'm going to get just a little bit of tinnage on there. Perfect. About the same amount that we see on these other pads. That's, that, that's looking pretty good there. Now I'm going to need those two components, and that's not something that I keep in stock. So I'm going to go ahead and steal them off of this 
lovely donor board right here. So here's what this area is supposed to look like. Now, I've already, you know, this is a donor board that I've done a lot of practice on. It's missing a bunch of stuff, including this TriStar IC here. But on this board, you can see that this antenna flex cable here is intact. Well, it's not really a flex cable. It's more like a, a PCB. This right here is a signal cable. It's actually a multi-cable that runs from the top of the board to the bottom. And... I see we just cut one trace here and if you get down in here there's actually multiple layers of traces this is actually a multi-layered thing so like if you chunk this off the board or damage it it is a, a it's a pretty painstaking process to to repair it and our customers board it's just like that whole entire area that whole chunk of that thing is missing that's just terrible so to make this thing work we're going to need these two components here. I'll clean them up just a tad so that I can be sure that the orientation is right. So pin one is towards our top left on both of them. That's actually really easy to see. All right, we are just almost up to temp here. And we're just going to swipe both of those suckers right off the board. I'm not actually going to be reballing these. I'm just going to kind of try to tin them up and make them semi-uniform. I mean, it is important to have semi-symmetrical balls, but this is going to be okay. So let's get some flux on here. And we're just going to take some 6337 leaded solder and just kind of graze the pads here. And we're just going to fluff these up some. Uh, we're not going to put legitimate symmetrical balls on here, but uh, more like some nice fluffy pillows. All right, there we go. So one last check on the customer's board here before I cram these components on here. I would like to see that we have a direct connection between these two and that also we've got somewhat of a, a diode mode reading here. So I'm going to stick my red probe on ground and then check these couple of pins here. Let's just check this one. 0.67, that is an acceptable, semi-acceptable reading. A 6-1, I would hope that we got exactly the same, but I, I might have twitched a little bit. So let me just check. I'm going to make sure we've got a connection between these two, because they should be the exact same thing, right? So one here, one here. We should get a 0, 0, 0. Give me yes, 0, 0, 0. Okay, so this all looks really good. Now, somewhere laying on the bench, I've left a couple of these little components laying. And just in case anybody forgot... Just how small these are. This is the sharpest round toothpick money can buy. All right, let's pick these up off of here. Oh, try not to crack them. There we go. So now we have our brand spanking new ICs on the board. We've got our pads repaired. Let's just see if I can get these to sit on the board where they go. Both of them at the same time, preferably. That would be kind of nice. There we go. Hmm, this, uh, this might actually be a little bit tricky. I'm just going to keep uh, warming this up while I struggle to keep these on top of their pads. And hopefully whenever it melts, they'll sit right exactly where they're supposed to. Come on, baby. Oh, no, no, no. I better slow that hot air down just a smidgen. There we go, there's a smidgen. We are now at an airflow of 25 with 340 degrees C. I should have probably just did these one at a time. Here we go. Almost there. Oh. Oh. 
Come on. There you, there you go. There you go. Oh yeah, perfect. Absolutely perfect. And if it wasn't bad enough that I've got them on here crooked and sideways and everything else, I've got to stab them with my tweezers too. Okay, a little more heating here. I want to make sure we get these nice and straight. That bottom one's kind of crooked, and if you know me, I just can't handle these components being crooked. The data won't transfer near as fast if this bottom component is crooked. Almost there. Yeah, there we go. Ooh. All right, now what else did we have on the other side of this board? There was some other ruckus ah, going on. Oh yes, that's right. We had this other conglomerate mess going on where we're missing this big old Trinity I see. So one of these lines here is the Tigris Buck LX line, and I'm about 99.23% certain that we are going to need that in order for this thing to get through a full data transfer. Now, it may actually get a USB connect without that, I know it's not going to charge the battery without that. Let's just do something about it. So Tigris Buck LX used to be a coil that was pictured on the schematic here between, uh, between this Buck LX line and also VDD main, but now it's just labeled to Trinity. So we don't want to deal with actually getting an entire Trinity back on the board. I just want to get some charge action going so I can copy some files. Let's just go ahead and grab us a coil off of a donor board. This one should be just fine. So back over to our customer's board. Let's have a look at the board view here and see where this thing needs to go. I don't see any real good way to do this without jumpers and things. So let's just see. Let's see where we can put this thing. Hmm, I'm going to say here looks like a pretty good spot. Let's just go ahead and glob this stuff all over the place. Yeah, that ought to be enough for now. Now, it really doesn't matter where we put this thing. Uh, we can pretty well put it anywhere we can get it to stick. Oh, and you know what? I almost forgot to insulate the pads. Let's be sure we don't cause any shorts under that. All right, we've got the mask all cured up. Now I'm going to take my semi-metallic squeegee here and get this thing sort of like squished onto the board. And we're going to make sure we use plenty of goop all the way around it so that it sticks in place nice and firm. That ought to do it. We'll cure that up with some mask for a good long while and I'll be right back. All right, this is all cured up now. Now we just need to get it wired up. So there is our brand spanking new coil glued to the board. Next, we're gonna pick out our Tigris Buck LX pins. Now to do that, I am just gonna count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so pins 11, 12, and 13 are Tigris Buck LX. So we can do the same thing here on the board. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. So all three of those pins there. All right, let's get some flux on here and here and there and everywhere. We're going to get our wire tinned up. And begin getting this thing tacked down to the board. A little micro pencil just doesn't quite hold up to the challenge with this heavier gauge wire. Seat the board up a little bit.
It's just marvelous. The other end of that wire right over here. We're just going to do a little bit of microscopic cable routing here. Yeah, right about like that. Let's go ahead and get some flux on here and get this soldered down to the board. So now we have that side hooked up and then the other side here, we just need that to go to VCC main or VDD main. Now, switching back over here and having us a little gander at flex board view, we can see if we count from the right side, one, two, three, and four, we've got VDD main all over the place. So I'm just going to take my microscopic mittens and see if we can finagle this other wire right over here to where I need it to be. Come on, baby. We're going to want this to sit right about like that. With this heavier gauge wire, it's like working with battery cables or something after using the 44 gauge. Ah, yes. The things we must do to get data. Just a little bit of microscopic mayhem here, folks. Let's get this wire soldered down here. I think we are just about to the point where I can call this done. I sure hope so anyways. Boy, that big old fat wire is really hard to get to stick. Come on, baby. We'll take it. Snip that right on off there. Now we need to make sure this one's up high enough so it's not touching this other pad. What is it? One, two, three. What's the next one up looking at flex? Uh, that would be ground. So if it is touching, we will have a direct short to ground here. So let's check in diode mode. Red probe on ground. Black probe on this side of that coil. Straight to ground. Dang it. So this is touching somewhere. I suspect right there. Let's just get our blade under it and see if we can cut it loose. I think I soldered it to ground right here. There we go. Now, let's see if we got ground there now. So, red probe on ground. Black probe, yeah. Damn it, straight to ground. Why? Hmm, maybe it's over here. Maybe. Just maybe it's right there. No, that's not touching. I could have miscounted, right? Let's figure out which side that short's on. So to do this, I'm just going to pull one of the wires off. Let's pull the long one off. And to make life a little easier, we're going to switch to the larger iron. Much easier. And now we are getting, on the VCC main side, a normal reading. But then on the Tigris LX side... We are getting a short. Let's just remove this jumper. Just take this jumper off altogether. Zero one, one, zero one, zero, zero, one. So we have Tigris LX short everywhere there. Let's just get this little jumper wire right back in place so that I don't have to cut another one. Let me just reuse the same one. It'll be fine. Good enough. Perfect. Looks like brand new. Now let's see what we can do about this little Buck LX short. 
Pascal Lee. I'm no expert, but it sure looks to me like somebody's been fumbling around with the Tigress I see, right? What else do we have on that Buck's, Buck LX line? Like, there's literally a couple of test points and Trinity. There's absolutely nothing else there. So the very next step in troubleshooting this, as much as I kind of hate to do this to a running booting board, this chip has to come off here. We are going to have to pull the Tigress IC because I believe our Buck LX short is going to be under this chip. It actually looks like it's sitting a little crooked anyways. So we'll just warm it right on up here. And then I'm going to let the board fall out from underneath it. Like that. And, uh, boy, I do see a short there, but it's not where I would expect it to be. Uh, what is shorted? It looks like we've just got two VCC main pins that are running together. All right, well, with this chip off the board, let's go ahead and check and see if our short is gone. I don't see anything obviously shorted on the bottom of this chip. So right on over to our rig job, coil job here. And we're going to see if we still got a short now with our Tigress IC off the board. Oh, that's misfortunate. We still have a short. Okay, well, I guess I'm sort of drawing a blank on that one. This short is probably really, 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 really obvious, but I'm... Hmm. Okay. Tell you what, I don't need this to charge a battery. I really just need USB connect. Let me see if with what I've done to the... Um, TriStar area here, if we can get USB connect. Which means we need to put this back on the board. I'm not going to worry about the two pins that are shorted down here at the corner, uh, because those are literally on the same net. They can, they'll be fine. Move out of my way, you little Texas instruments. That'll work. Let's get her back on there, shall we? And then uh, see if we get USB connect. There is this other little thing over here missing too, right here. I'm not really sure what that is. We're just going to be slow heating this up while trying to finagle this little chip into place. Come on. We're sort of sitting uh, balls on top of humps. And we're trying to get it to sit right at the highest point on the hump. It's kind of a tricky process. Almost there. There we go. One little nudge. And it is good to go. Now, to keep this thing from releasing all of its magic smoke, we seriously need to disconnect VCC main or VDD main from this shorted line. We are getting a 0 0.00000 something to the ground here. Let's just make sure it's still there still the case oh yeah zero zero one volts dc to ground on vcc main and that's because of this stinking shorted lx line so let's just get rid of it maybe we don't need it right we're just trying to get data come on you know you want to give me your your lovely data just flip over upside down and puke out your data on the bench Let's see if we're still shorted on main. I'm pretty sure we are not. Should get a three something. Yeah, point three. So VCC main is good. Buck LX is still a direct short. So you know, let's just screw Buck LX. Let's just leave it like that. Let's see if we can get USB. Let's use our backlight repair in a can. Let's see if USB will prompt it to boot. Let's see if anything smokes. Uh oh, we're getting a little warmer. USB prompted the boot. Let's turn our sound up nice and loud here so we can hear any sort of USB connect. All right, we are up to the lock screen. I've unlocked it, but I have no USB connect. Now I'm not using his housing. This is my housing, so I know that I've got a good dock flex. Flip it over, I got it on the other side, baby. All right, come on. rebooted Arr, okay i did get a usb connect and then an instant reboot we're just gonna have to fiddle around with this thing until i get a backup aren't we it's a really slow boot 
And you know, the battery data pins on this look like total crap, and I didn't do anything with them. This could be battery data reboots. Okay, no USB connect. I'm going to unplug the cable and flip it over. Plug it in. Nothing. The phone is still responding. I have touch. Unplug cable. Flip over again. No USB connect. Oh, that's lovely. We got some other components here missing around TriStar. What exactly is all of this mess? I really don't see anything too terribly crazy missing there. Now, I do know that we have this thing missing. And I honestly don't, I don't know exactly what that is. Let's go ahead and pull this TriStar IC off the board and see what they have going on underneath it. Watch, they never actually took it off there. They just broke everything, and then this is the original chip. And it was just a TriStar failure all along. Um, okay, that came off really easy. And I want to say that there are little to no balls on it. And it also looks like we've got possibly damaged stuff. So, hmm, let's troubleshoot, okay. We're going to get the data off of this one. Maybe not today, but maybe by tomorrow. I'm just going to shine all this up real good so that we can see what's going on and see what all connections we have or don't have. So far it doesn't look too bad. Okay. Alright, so we've got some craziness going on here. We do have a missing, two missing pads actually. Um, I really don't think this one here would have made a connection. The rest of these probably would have, but that one there, I just, with the lack of balls that was going on here, I really don't think that one would have made a connection. Let's just, uh, hmm, okay. What is that that we have missing? Data pin. Hmm. Okay. Let's just go ahead and reconnect that. Let's get this little wire soldered on here. Come on. There we go. Ha oh, ha come on. There we go. Perfect. All right, let's clean this up with some alcohol and get ready to start building a new pad out of this hunk of wire. We're just going to roll it right on up. Got us a different TriStar IC reballed here with some fresh leaded solder on it. Let's just get some flux on here. And let's get us a little TriStar IC back in place, shall we? So we're just going to continue carefully warming this board up. And we are just waiting for this IC to settle down into place. And then we're going to give it a nice little nudge. There we go. All right. Now, we'll see if we made any difference. I'm going to let this cool off a little bit. And then uh, hopefully we get the data. All right, here we go again. We've got our Backlight Master 3000 in here. And let's see if we get a boot prompt from USB. We do not. Let's flip it over and try again. We're going to press the button to boot in one, two, three. Boot. Only no power supply since we're going straight from the battery. Right, we have an Apple logo. Okay, we are past the lock screen. Let's see if we get USB. Of course not. Why, why would we? All right, let's flip it over and try the other side. It's crazy. It was working. Okay, I have had a bit of a long break. I had to, to push this thing aside and come back to it because I had other promises that I had to keep. 
I went ahead and replaced our little reverse gate MOSFET. This is Q4001, but that didn't make any difference at all. I have put another new, new TriStar IC on this thing, and I've got it back to the point where it will boot from USB. Like when you plug in the USB cable, it'll prompt this thing to start up. And I actually got it to do a USB connect with iTunes and trusted it. And that lasted all the way up until it restarted on me. And ever since it restarted, I have not been able to get USB Connect again. Just not. So I'm going to try some more things on here and see if we can get this up and going. And also, I went ahead and replaced both of those MOSFETs again. Uh, we were missing a few things here that kind of caught my eye. We are missing this little thing here. So I thought I would just go ahead and slap one of those back on the board and maybe that'll make a difference. Let's grab one of these off of a donor board. We're just going to nab this one right here. Let's flip it around make this a little easier. There we go. And let's just get this little sucker put on our customer's board. We'll just sit it right down on there and heat it up at the same time. Now let's add some more... We better add some more flux to that. There we go. And as soon as it drops down on there, we're going to give it just a little bit of a nudge. Beautiful. Yeah, so aside from that component right there, uh, we are missing the coils that are wrapped up here in Trinity for backlight, but it should be completely fine without that. Uh, this Charge LX line. We're going to try it once more with this component that I just put in place here, but I really do not have high hopes that that's actually going to solve it. And I also wonder, since I did have a behavior where I had USB Connect and then not. I wonder if I smoked another TriStar IC. So let's see what we get here. Battery up. And now let's see if we get boot from USB. And one, two, three. Oh, we won't get backlight. We have to use our artificial light. Now we are shooting for USB connect. And no reboot. I don't think that component I just stuck on there has anything to do with USB connect. I really don't. Passcode. Still no USB connect. And it rebooted exactly when I plugged in this charge cord. So that is uh, that's a symptom. It did that to me a minute ago. Seems to be an awful lot of capacitors missing, huh? Let's pull Tigris off of here again. Which I had it off of here once before. It was a clean lift. I just sat it right back on. Let's get this off of here and do something about this LX short. Okay, looks just as good as it did the last time. So let's have a look at Flexboard View. And let's see which of those pads is going to be responsible for this Buck LX. Here we go. So it's actually going to be four pins along this side over here. And just for the sake of knowing, we're going to test this for connection to ground and be sure that it is absolutely positively still shorted. So with our red probe on ground and our black probe doing the probing, we should get a 0, 0.000 across all these. Now that's really weird. I'm not. Did I do something wrong? Is my meter working? That meter is working. No, it's open like I would expect it to be. And then on the other side of the board... Oh my goodness. Look at what I did. Oh, I'm so dumb. Look at this. I literally soldered that wire straight on the ground. Oh no, 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 no. I was about to literally carve that row of pads off the board and rebuild this part of the circuit outside on top of the board. So let's go ahead. Uh, let's move this up here to the pins that it's supposed to be on. I literally soldered that jumper straight to ground. This micro pencil's not doing very good at all soldering this on. Like, yeah, okay. I had this off of here once, so maybe, just maybe, I had it right the first time and did it wrong the second time. Just maybe. This jumper is supposed to be on this row. Because the other row is all ground.
I would say I can't believe I did that, but I'd be lying. Hey, hey, now let's check and make sure that we don't have a short to ground on this LX line. What do you want to bet? Our little short to ground problem is gone. Well, will you look at that? No more short to ground. Let's just get her hooked right back up to VCC main. All right, now we should get like a, a 0.3-ish something reading on diode. Let's see what we get. Now that we're not soldered directly to ground. 0.31, that is a good reading. Okay, now let's uh, let's go ahead and put this little tiger size C back on the board here. Since we had a clean lift, I'm just going to sit it right back on there again. Mm, that kind of looks a little bit swanky, but we're going to see how it goes. Okay, so everything charge circuit wise should be intact on here. I have fixed this little short to ground on the LX line that I brutally created with a soldering iron and a hunk of wire. And we've replaced the little MOSFET thingies that were pried off of this board with a screwdriver or something. I've corrected battery data pins. Maybe, just maybe. This thing will get a USB connect and stay that way. Now, I am concerned that I've popped another TriStar IC because I had USB connect and then it went away. So before this is all done and said, I might actually have to put one more TriStar IC on here. At this point in the game, I am actually worried about charging current uh, because everything's wired up as it should be, I hope. Uh, we should actually get charging current here. Now, the battery was at 4.1, so I'm not expecting, like, a lot of current, but we should get something in one, two, three. Wait, wait, wait. Where's my light? All right, let's get our backlight in here. There we go. All right, now let's check charging current in one, two, three. Plug. Hey, hey, we're getting something better than zero. Oh, that's a good sign. 200 milliamps. Now, keep in mind, this battery is you know four volts it's over four volts it's almost 4.2 but i am happy to see that we're drawing something through usb let's see if we also get a charging tone come on baby just give me one itunes backup and i promise i will never ask you to boot again okay just one backup any minute all right we are up to a lock screen i'm not getting a charging tone or anything i have a speaker hooked up don't i Zero amps, charging current. After I unplug and plug back in, I'm going to flip it over and try the other side. Mm, nope. Now, because I did get USB connect temporarily, I'm really worried that I have fried a TriStar IC. And then also now that the power is off, we're starting to draw a tiny bit of charging current again. I'm going to try one more TriStar IC. Okie dokie, this phone has all things USB connection needed in place. So let's see if it will boot on USB connect. It should. It is. Mm -mm, no connect on that side of the cable. I'm going to flip the cable over. And uh, no connect there. <laughs> oh boy, do I have good news. I slapped the new Tigris IC on here. I went ahead and I pulled Q2701, Q2700, and U4001 back off of the board. I spent some time checking continuity just to make sure we had a good connection between everything here. And um, everything tested good. So ultimately what I did from there was just put another set of fresh components on the board. And something that I did or one of the components I put on the board was bad. Because now we have... Oh, isn't it magical? We have USB connect. Let's, let's just hear that once more. Ooh, yes. Oh, I love the way you connect to USB. You make me so happy. Yes. Now, I am pleased to say I'm doing all this playing around because I have already got a backup of it. I have already got a backup of this phone and this is a successful recovery. And here 
is one of the very most exciting parts. We actually have proper charging current. So not only do we have working USB, but we've actually got a properly working charging circuit with all of the carnage that's been going on on this thing. So with that, that is going to put an end to this video. I think what happened with this board is that this was initially a Wi-Fi short. It was confused to be a charging problem. Something went horribly wrong with the TriStar repair and I think maybe they overheated it or something and caused like an internal short within Trinity, which led them to remove Trinity from the board. I'm really not 100% sure about that because I don't have the old Trinity. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Now, this customer has asked me if I will be able to send this back to them fully repaired. And although this board should be able to boot and stuff whenever they get it back, there's just no way that I would stick my neck out and try to warranty all this and just sit here and, I mean, it's already been a pretty big task to get the data off of here. So that is going to be the end of this video. I really thank you all for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below and uh, I will see you next time. Have a good day, everybody. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, without the USB connect, this one would have been a really hairy deal because we don't have Wi-Fi which means that we couldn't have backed up the data with Wi-Fi. Uh, this board was actually throwing a major BF over baseband. So for whatever reason, the baseband is not working. So we could not have backed up data that way. And then if USB connect would not have worked, then gosh, that would have put us in a really, really, really bad position. It is a very good feeling to see something like this working properly. Now, I'm not going to send this thing back with flux and stuff oozing all over it. I am going to go ahead and clean this up. Mm -hmm.